What's up everybody? My name is Josiah Flays. We're going to show you a bit of our reverse engineering process here. As you can see on the table, we've got a RX-7 FD front lower control arm and here we have a front skyline spindle or knuckle. With these, what we're going to do is laser scan them to get their reference points and critical dimensions so that we can reverse engineer it, use those dimensions and apply them to our angle kits. And what we're going to do with the dimensions I'll show you on the screen where we pick up different points, we create planes, we create cylinders where we need them, and we use these dimensions to implement and uh, make them better. So to do this, we're using a Creoform HandyScan 307. This is a laser scanner that uses these reference points um, or targets to relay the information and where the part is in reference to space. Once it picks up these dots, it'll be able to know where everything else is in relation to the dots. And what happens is I can spin the part around and it'll pick up all this geometry. And then when I'm gonna do the underside of the arm, I'm simply gonna flip it. I'm gonna merge the scans and then scan the bottom half of the arm where it's going to reference these targets again. I can put the two scans together and you will see a nicely created troll arm on the computer. So we can just go ahead and start scanning. So to do this, I'm using the VX element software that comes with this handy scan. And then I'm going to Im import it into our Fusion 360 software where we can then manipulate it and create the control arm that we need to build for our angle kit, which is going to be longer, beefier, more adjustable. Um, and, and designed to clear a lot of steering angle. So let's get started on scanning. I'm gonna start, it's a really simple process. And once I begin, I wanna set my tolerances. This is currently reading at one millimeter. And to start, it's as simple as hitting the go button. For good scan, you want to just get a good baseline where you're picking up every target, but you're not getting all of the details that you might want. And once you get a good general scan, you can then zoom in, um, increase the shutter speed, and get a lot more detail on, let's say, interior holes, bushings, and other small critical areas. So to give you an example, I've got a pretty good outline of the control arm and if I zoom in and if you're looking at the screen, increase my shutter speed and this ball joint's not getting picked up very well. So I can increase the shutter speed and it'll really start to pick up more accurate details. And the reason why it won't pick it up as easy is because the lasers don't reflect off of black that well unless you increase the shutter speed. But you don't necessarily have to have the shutter speed super high to pick up all the other stuff. So it's nice that with this scanner you can increase and decrease that for when you need it. Whenever you're zooming in on a really small detailed part, you have to make sure that there's targets within the area that you're zooming into because it constantly needs that reference. So right now I'm trying to get inside the hole so that I can grab that hole later and use it for my reverse engineering process. And we're just about done this top scan. Now I'm gonna flip the arm over, do the bottom, and then I'll show you how it all goes together. So I've got my first scan. The next thing I need to do is render the scan so that I'm able to use it. And you can see the whole underside is obviously not picked up. It's got a lot of this 
scatter geometry, which is basically just the table. To delete all that, it's really easy. Uh, basically, I can create a plane by selecting some points and I can delete everything below this plane. And I will just be left with the part and I'll easily be able to see what data I missed. Now that we can see the arm by itself, all I need to do is now flip the arm. The scanner is able to pick up these targets that I've left. When I flip the arm, it'll automatically align them and then merge the two scans together. It takes a little bit to think about it, and then once it picks up, both scans will merge together and you'll start seeing the formation of a full control arm. So let's go ahead, we'll flip this because we're gonna flip it on the table and I can see what points I wanna reference in order to grab them and align the scans. And basically from here, we just need to flip the arm and then start the scan. So we've got the arm flipped. I know that I left the targets on the arm and I removed the targets on the table. So now the targets on the table are to be a new reference point in relation to the targets on the arm. If I pick up the targets that I can see on the sides, it'll automatically realize that those targets will line up with the ones that are already there and it'll flip it. So once I start scanning, you'll kind of see some confusion on the screen and then you will start to see them come together. So it's already figured it out and it has flipped the arm and now we can just go ahead and scan the rest of this and you'll see it really come together as one piece. It's really important that we get some details on these holes so that I'm able to create a cylinder inside of them that I'm able to use in my Fusion 360 software to create. So I just go over everything. The longer you're scanning, the more information it's collecting and the larger the file is going to be. Luckily, we have a good laptop to run it, but these files can get pretty large with the, uh, the amount of data that's in them. And that's it. That's really all we need to do in order to reverse engineer this control arm. So the important thing to note with these control arms is that we want to pick up on the critical dimensions that we're going to need. So obviously we're going to need the sway bar pickup point, which is this. We're going to need the shock mount, which is this. Our control arm ball joint is here. And with all these points, we're able to create cylinders, planes, cones, and other forms of data that we can use when we transfer it over into our fusion these constraints and these critical dimensions that we pick up are going to transfer over so that I can use them and then reverse engineer my control arm from them. Um, and then I can import this arm as a mesh file where it'll be visible but not necessarily usable. Only the critical points will be usable. So just to give it a quick demonstration, I've now opened my control arm into the VX model portion of the software where I can create planes. So I'm just going to show you doing one and then the rest of it pretty much falls in line with with what it is. Uh, I'm not going to show you exactly how it's all done because that's pretty involved. I'm just going to give you an example. I need a plane here and then I need a plane here and then I need to make a cylinder going through them. So I'm just going to select the surface I can select a couple points so that it gives me an average. This is now a plane on that face and that's how I create it. And then I want to make a cylinder. I just select my cylinder function. I can click a similar normal size, which this is going to average a cylinder within this hole because you can see that I didn't scan, I didn't get every single part of the arm, but it doesn't really matter. It's going to pick up the majority of the hole and then average what, it, what it's picking up. It's telling me that this hole is a 12.2 millimeter hole, which makes a lot of sense because a 12 millimeter bolt goes through the hole. For constraints, I wanna make sure that the cylinder is exactly normal or perpendicular to the plane. So I just select the plane that I created, make sure that it's the same, and now that's as easy as that. That's how you create that. And I go through the arm and I create 
um, a plane and cylinders and other features on all these points so that I can then use these when I transfer it to my software. And that is really quickly summarized how we go about reverse engineering these control arms from the factory parts. And that's about it. Thanks for watching on how we reverse engineer our control arms using factory components. I'm going to keep working and scan up this Skyline knuckle. And from there, I'm going to start my process of what I do pretty much on a daily, which is answer your emails, take care of business, and create new products. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next episode where we're probably going to be using our display again, which is front suspension geometry. We're going to go over roll center. Make sure you hit the bell so that you're notified whenever we post. And uh, yeah, see you guys there.